Hey there everybody, it's Mike Felicio with another Solo Mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Solo Mode for Maglev Metro from designer Ted Alsbach and publisher Bezier Games. In Maglev Metro you are playing someone controlling a magnetic rail train. It's essentially a pick up and deliver game. Let's head over to the table, I'll show you how the Solo game differs from the multiplayer game, then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we see most of the setup for a solo game of Maglev Metro. You can play on either side of the board. I just happen to be showing the Manhattan side. On the reverse of this is the Berlin map, and it plays slightly different. This is generally considered to be the more forgiving, uh, perhaps easier side of the map, although I don't know if easier is the right terminology, but be that as it may, we have most of a setup. It's very, very similar to a multiplayer game. As far as what goes on out here, it's exactly the same. Actually, I've missed a couple things. I should be putting passengers of the correct colors on each of these stations as well. I, I neglected to do that. So um, generally speaking, what you're going to do that's a little bit different in the solo game is you are going to start like a normal with one of each of these scoring cards, one from each pile. And these are potential scoring things that you're going for by the end of the game. You can always score one of them at the end of the game and you can unlock on your player board the ability to score more. For each one of these rows completed, you can score another B, uh, bonus VP card. So if all three of those rows were filled at the end of the game, you could score all four of those cards. The default is one. Um, so the other thing that you have to do that's different to the solo game is you have to draw two of these connection cards at random and you place them by the side of the board. And now what this is telling you is that in the solo game, you cannot make connections between what is depicted here. So I can't make a connection from the warehouse to the studio or from an office to a store. It's a limiting thing. It's something that keeps me a bit more limited in the game. So I would place those somewhere near the board so I can keep track of making sure that I don't make those types of connections. Otherwise, the game plays exactly the same as it would before. I'm not going to go into a rules overview because we have our four squares rules overview. If you want to get a better idea on how the game plays, you can look at that and I'll link that in the description of this video. But essentially, it's a pick up and deliver game and you're going to be building track, moving your train, picking up character or picking up passengers, dropping them off, potentially um, gaining different ac extra actions, unlocking different stations to bring out different types of passengers, etc. All in a way to score points. And so, you know, you, you can lay out some track and then try to build stations once you've done so. Perhaps a factory here. Those silver workers would not be there. And then you can go and pick up passengers and then deliver them. And when you deliver passengers, you're delivering them onto your board. The only thing that really is different in the solo game is that before every one of your turns, you have to reach into this bag and remove one of the passengers from the game. So every turn, you're gonna have a passenger that you've removed from the bag. So it's a bit of a timer, first of all, because the game ends as soon as there are no passengers to pull out of the bag. Now, you start with all of the robots in the bag, which are these characters that were on the, the main part of the map. So you've got bronze, silver, which are over here, and then gold. Now, I do wanna point something out. This is going to probably look different than the copy that you have, if you have it. These gold robots, we had painted. This is the studio review copy. We painted them yellow because the difference between the gold and the bronze was not distinct enough to any of us, honestly, here in the studio. So we had these painted. That makes them much more easy to differentiate, okay? But you're going to be going along, building your track, picking up passengers, and hopefully scoring points. At the end of the game, what you're gonna do is you look at the regular rule sheet here. This is the multiplayer rule sheet. On the opposite side, you've got the single player rule sheet and you can actually see my last score, which was not tremendous. But the one thing that you have that's different, all of the other scoring is essentially the same, but you have to subtract the number of passengers that uh, you had pulled out of the bag. So basically, you wanna be as efficient as possible and I took 23 turns you then will look at the score that you have 
and you are going to compare it on the back here with this kind of scoring matrix. And you can see depending on what map you're playing on, you're gonna have a number of different um, kind of classifications, rating. And you could see it goes all the way up to beyond 170. I was nowhere near that. I was not very efficient. I did not do terribly well, but what else is new, I ask you? So that in a nutshell is how you play the solo game. It's very, very similar to the multiplayer game. Not any really big changes other than these direct connections that you can't do and pulling out a passenger from the bag every turn as kind of a timer. So let's head back over and I'll give you my final thoughts on the game. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the solo game plays for Maglev Metro. It's really very similar to the multiplayer game. And honestly, thinking about it, the multiplayer game has interaction points, but in some senses, it's almost a multiplayer solitaire game. I mean, you are going to have potentially uh, com competition over the different uh, stations and things like that, but the core mechanics of the game don't really change at all when you're playing solo. You actually just have that kind of timer of pulling out a passenger from the bag every time. So, first thing I like to do is talk about solo benchmarks. These are things that I consider when I'm looking at a particular game and whether I want to get it down off the shelf for a solo play. First thing is win-loss condition. Is there a clear win-loss condition? Are you playing against an AI opponent? Beat your high score. Uh, in Maglev Metro, you are not playing against an automated opponent. You are strictly by yourself on the board and you are trying to be as efficient as possible. As such, it is really a puzzle game and therefore it has a high score variant. In this particular game, I think that's absolutely fine. I actually prefer this type of a variant for this game because if I had an AI opponent that I was having to manage, I think it would take away from the core mechanic of trying to be efficient. This is really all about getting as much done in as short a period of time as possible. And so therefore, I don't mind having the high score. I like that they've got a very, very exhaustive list, a score matrix, where you've got so many different uh, variations on where you can be. And uh, my scores so far have been on the very low end of the range. I see all of these high scores that are possible, and that just makes me think, man, I could do a lot better in this game. But I have no problem with that at all in this game. Setup and teardown is really a breeze. For a big box game like this, it really doesn't take long at all. I mean, a couple of minutes to get the game set up and you're good to go. It's very, very easy to get it on the table, get it played, and then get it torn, torn down just as quickly. A very big positive there. The rules are another thing I like to talk about, and the rules in Maglev Metro for the solo game, there's really nothing to it. There's a small paragraph at the end of the rule book that details the differences, which are essentially getting those two connection, direct connection cards, making sure you don't make connections there, pulling out an extra passenger from the bag at the beginning of every turn, and then giving you the score matrix. It's very simple, very clear. If you understand how the multiplayer game plays, you're gonna understand how the solo game plays almost right away. I think that the rule book in general is a good rule book. No complaints at all about that at all. All right, art and components. Well, we talked about this in the four square review of the multiplayer game, so I'm not gonna belabor it. But I do wanna mention here, if you didn't watch that video, my biggest issue with the components in this game, and it would apply to a solo game if you're getting this primarily as a solo game, is that the bronze and gold robots, as they come in the game, are remarkably difficult to differentiate. For me, it was really a significant problem. And so here with our office copy, what we did was we painted the gold robots basically a yellow. And I, I really think that that's almost essential. I mean, if you have really good lighting and maybe fantastic eyesight, you won't have as much of a problem with the bronze and the gold. But this was not just a problem that I had. This is a problem that everybody that I've played this game with has mentioned as well. So keep that in mind, it is an issue. And if they have subsequent printings, I really hope that they address that. Everything else, art and component wise, is top notch. I really like the acrylic tiles for your track. I love the super thick cardboard stations and the board itself is a, like a puzzle board that you put together in four pieces. Really good quality, the card quality is fine. The art is minimal, but functional and attractive to my eye. So. 
overall, with, the, with that one glaring exception, the art and, and uh, components are good. So for the overall solo experience, what do I think about Maglev Metro as a solo game? First of all, I love how quickly this game plays. It is really maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes if you're really, really puzzling out every turn. But this is a snappy game. I mean, I really like that. It's essentially an efficiency puzzle. And if I've done a good job as a reviewer in previous reviews, I've hopefully expressed how much I like efficiency puzzles. Those are really the types of solo games I tend to, to gravitate towards. And so this was a game that I really like as a multiplayer game, and I also really like it as a solo game. I like that core efficiency puzzle. I'm also a big fan of the pick up and deliver mechanic. And so this really checks off all of my boxes. It's a quick to play game. It has nice art and components, easy to set up and tear down, good rules, mechanics that I enjoy, set up, uh, excuse me, uh, pick up and deliver with a core efficiency puzzle engine. All of this goes to show that I think that Maglev Metro is a really good uh, solo game. I'm giving it an eight out of 10, a strong seal of approval. I think that this is a game that hopefully is gonna get the attention that it deserves because uh, I do think that it does something different in the solo gaming sphere. Uh, there are other pick up and deliver solo games, but maybe not ones that do it quite like this where you've got that player board that you can use to kind of uh, mitigate and manipulate how efficient you are at laying track or moving your train, things along those lines. So overall, a really good solo game and one that I can easily recommend. Well, that's it for me. This is Mike Delicio signing off from Dice Tower Headquarters.